Today we're going to look at the steps that you'll take to can fish or other kinds of meat. First I'm going to separate the thin belly meat from the thicker flank meat. The flank meat I'll use in the smoker and I'll can the belly meat. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to skin this because we're going to can this and I don't like skin in my cans. And so, see there's the skin and there's fresh belly meat. This was maybe perhaps the world's smallest sockeye salmon. We caught it enough that it was going to die, so we just um, went ahead and put it on our stringer and we'll can that whole fish then. The river that we were fishing, the Kasilaf River, is known to have smaller reds than some of the other rivers. I personally like the reds that come off the Kenai. Um, those are a lot bigger reds, but um, the time that we could go, the sea loft was hot, and I wasn't. It's easier to stuff the jars when the pieces are small, at least the way I do it. I know some people that, and so the, the one thing about this too is I left those bones in there. When you can fish, you can go ahead and leave the bones in the pieces like that, and those bones will completely dissolve in the canning process, and it actually adds calcium then, and so it's healthy. I've taken the fish that I'm going to can, and I've put it on top of tin foil, and the tin foil is on top of racks for my smoker. I'm going to go ahead and put them in the smoker for about an hour and a half just to get a little bit of smoke on them, add a little bit of flavor to them. So this is just for flavor. Okay, so this has been in here about a little over an hour. You can see that it's taken on just a little tinge of a yellow color on some stuff, and that's just the smoke getting on there. And so we're going to go ahead and take it off and put it in jars. Okay, when we're canning, um, people add all kinds of different things to their canning stuff. What we're going to do is um, we're going to add a little jalapeno in every single jar that we do. And then we're going to add a little slice of lime. A lot of people don't use lime, but you'd be surprised how good it tastes. We've already, as you've seen prior, we've already taken all the fish that we're going to can today and we put it on smoke for about two hours and so that should just add kind of an aftertaste almost of smoke if you will to um, the flavor of our fish okay so we're getting ready to fill these jars up in every jar I'm going to put one piece of lime in And I left the rind on there. In the canning process, that'll pretty much be dissolved so much that you can just mix it right in with your fish and it adds some really good flavor to it. And every jar is gonna, gonna get a couple jalapenos in it. That's gonna add a little bit of heat. Sometimes I add one, sometimes I add two. Today I'm gonna add two because I got a lot. You can put anything you want in here, just about. It kind of really depends on your own um, preferences. But I would say, I would for sure try lime if you haven't done that before. I'd try, myself, I'd try a little bit of jalapeno. And I'd also try putting just a couple hours of smoke. If you take fully, can fully smoked fish and put it in there, you're going to find that it becomes very, very salty. And, um, and also very, very smoky. And so you just want just a hint of smoke in it. So about two hours. In a normal smoker, if you're using a Bradley smoker, I would use a lot less smoke than that. 
I'm going to put a pinch of salt in every one of these as well. Now, one of the tricky things is when you fill this up, I know my hand's in your way there. When you fill that up, you'll see you have to leave what they call headspace in these jars. If you don't leave enough headspace in there, then they won't seal. Let me want to get a good example of that. So what I kind of do is I pick through pieces and try to find pieces that'll fill it just about right. Okay, so I'm in the process of filling these canning jars. And the bottom half of it I don't worry about so much. I just poke stuff in here. There are some people that actually go to the painstaking struggle to cut all their fish the exact same size so that they fit from the bottom up to here, but I don't want to work that hard, I think. And so I'm going to fill this up. And the top of it is where I start getting a little particular. In the top of this jar, I want to make sure that I don't encroach in on this space above where the threads go in this. And they call it the head space. And if you go above that, the jars, at least I found, the jars don't seal every single time. In fact, they seal very few times. And so you want to leave enough space in there so that when it's hot in there, there's less air. And then when it goes to cool, it sucks that lid down really tight and seals it. That's, I think, as much as anything, what makes a seal inside of a canning jar. So I'm going to go ahead and finish filling all these up, and then we'll take a look at the next process. Okay, so we've got our jars filled up, and we've got two steps left to do still. One of the steps is we're going to take this knife, we're going to go right around the inside of that jar. And what that does is it allows, when the thing starts boiling in there, it makes sure that nothing's stuck to the wall so bad that, um, that the bubbles can't freely go all the way up and around that, around the glass. And then we're going to take a wet paper towel and just make sure that that seal line there is nice and clean. The lid on every one. Band on every one of these. Now we'll come back and tighten these in just a minute and we'll talk about how tight to make them. The nice thing about canning fish or any kind of meat, actually, we've canned moose before. So we're going to tighten this up and we just want it finger tight. That's plenty tight, just so it's snug on there. You don't need to really show everybody how tough your grip is or anything. Smell like that. So we've canned moose before, um, canned deer before. The nice thing about it, though, is you can put this on the shelf. I'm eating fish right now that I canned four years ago, and it's just as good as the day it was canned. You just have to make sure when you take it out of the canner that it has seal, and we'll talk about that when that process gets here. And so right now, these are ready to go into the canner. Okay, so we have our canner going here. When there's, You never want to put the jar straight on the bottom, so we have different little racks, and we have a rack in the bottom of it if you'll scoot up here. So you can see the rack there, and we're going to start by just putting some water in here to start with. We'll see if that's enough water. And now what we do is we put all these jars in, and you want the bottom of the jar to be in the water, but you don't want it to be all the way up on the lid. There, and then we put another little rack in here. We'll put our last two jars in here. And you could fill this thing all the way up three last few jars you could fill this thing up and all the way to the top but this is all we have for today and then we're gonna put the lid on it and if you'll see on here there's a arrow here on the lid and as we scoot around here there's gonna be an aerial on here that we line that up with right there And then the, 
these things connect under here and then we're going to put all these up and so this is a pressure cooker whenever you cook meat you're going to use a pressure cooker if you're just doing jam or something you can use a different can but if you do meat you're going to do a pressure cooker we're going to tighten this up okay on here you can see that there's an arrow there and there's a hashtag here you can see that hashtag there those two things should line up i'm going to put this on slide that over and then put all these up on here and just i'm just snugging them i'm not tightening them up this is kind of an important part here okay so they're all just finger tight now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go on opposite sides. These two I'm going to turn part way, these two part way, these two part way, and just keep going like that until I have the whole thing tight. All right, I got my canner on the stove. I got this burner. The middle burner is just barely going. I'm going to go ahead and put my canner on top of the stove. And so it's going, and we're going to let that come up to heat real slowly. Meanwhile, over here, I don't know if you can see that. A little bit of smoke coming out. We got the smoker going. That's a different project. In that project, I'll talk about my custom super cool cover there. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and let this start going. So our goal is this see this nipple here. What's going to happen is the water in there's going to start boiling. It's going to start sputtering out here. We're going to wait until we have a steady stream of steam coming out before we put a weight on that to plug that up. We're going to want to run this at about 10 pounds of pressure, 8 to 10 pounds of pressure, for 90 minutes once we do that. We'll talk about that process when we start going. All right, you can see, maybe, this thing's just starting to vent. See a little puff of smoke coming out of there. I don't know if you can see that or not. I would guess another five minutes. Okay, it's been about five minutes. I'm going to hold this dark thing up behind it. And you can see that we're pretty much steady steam coming out of there. Not quite, though. So we're going to give it a couple more minutes. I want steady steam coming out of that. All right. It's been a couple more minutes. I'm going to hold my backdrop up here. You can see that it's steady steam pouring out of that thing. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put a weight on the top of it. And so this is a canning weight that goes on the top of this. And you can see these things are drilled out for a different size for the nipple for different weights. And what I want is I want the one that says 10. You can see 10. I'm going to put that right on there. And so what that's going to do is it's going to build up 10 pounds of pressure in there and then it's going to start venting and it'll start rattling on there. What we want to make sure is that it just continues to rattle, rattle, rattle. Um, that means that there's some, there's a, at least 10 pounds of pressure in there and it's venting out. If all of a sudden it just starts rocking and going crazy, then it's too hot and we'll want to turn it back a little bit. Typically speaking, what happens is as the contents of this thing warms up, you have to dial the heat back because the pressure, because it'll just continue to be hotter and hotter in there. That valve will only keep 10 pounds of pressure in there, but we want to make sure that we have water in there the whole time, so we'll have to maintain that and watch it as we go forward. Okay, this has been going for a little while. You can see the pressure right now is up to about probably 3 pounds, and obviously this isn't venting yet. Okay. We're back here. You can see we're at about 10 pounds of pressure. You can see the bottom of that weight. It's got stuff coming out. Of it. And so it's venting off, maintaining 10 pounds. So we're going to start the clock. Okay, so you can see that that's starting to vent. A little bit aggressive right now, and that's because the contents are getting warmed up. We're probably about 50 minutes into this, so we're going to turn the heat back just a little bit so that we make sure we have water in there the whole time. Well, it's been 90 minutes, still at 10 pounds, still venting perfectly. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the heat off. And then what will happen is this will quit venting. 
then the pressure will go down to zero. When it gets to zero, we'll take this off. We can open it up and take the jars out. It's cooled down to zero. So we're going to go ahead and empty it. So the first thing in emptying this is I'm going to take this weighted thing off here. And it's hot, so make sure you do that. And this is a jar picker upper. And so again, we're going to do this exactly like tighten it. We're going to untighten it a little bit at a time on each one of them. So we want to warp this lid. hot in here so you got to be careful now once these jars get into the cooler air they're going to start sealing and you'll hear them popping let me seal we'll get a close up of that and so typically speaking you see that it's boiling like that in there. That means that that jar has sealed. So you can see how it's boiling in there. And so that jar is going to seal well. Now you can see these are all boiling in there still. See that's a good sign. That means that those are going to seal. We got that poor little bud right there. It'll probably be dinner tonight. Next is we're going to let them cool all the way down to room temperature. Then we're going to wash them. We'll take the lids off. We'll wash them. We'll put new bands on them before we store them. Otherwise, they kind of start stinking. The jars do. That'll be our last step. Kind of the final test to see if these are sealed. See, I can push on that and nothing happens. Nothing happens, nothing happens. This is that dead one. See, that lid didn't seal down. All the rest of them sealed down. 